Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd I have to be like continue on in our study of Al-Asul Thalatha The Three Fundamentals And where are the Three Fundamentals again? Where, what are the Three Fundamentals? They come from what? Huh? The question to the grave Jazakallah khairan Allah yubarak fiki Naam they come from the questions of the grave. What are the questions of the grave? Those three questions again, that Asul al Who is who is who is yeah, who is your Lord? No. And who is your prophet? Who is your prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talking about Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, huh? What? What is your deen? What is your deen? Jazakallah khairan Naam. And what is your deen? What's your religion? We'll be asked these questions in the grave. So we reached the portion of the treatise where Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala was talking about the different types of ibadah, the different types of ibadah. And he mentioned, we reached the portion where he said, performing prayer, paying zakat. He was talking about these different types of ibadah. We talked about the inward, some of the inward acts of ibadah and some of the outward acts of ibadah because ibadah as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, is كُلُّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ مِنْ أَعْمَالِ أَضَّاهِرْ وَالْبَاطِنِ وَكَمَا قَالَ Shaykh al-Islam He said, is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from those actions internally and externally Internal ibadah is like taqwa, uh, ihsan All of these things are internal we don't know, we can't measure that because it's inside, it has to do with actions of the heart. And then the outward actions, which are the actions of the limbs, like when you make salat, salat is inward and outward. Zakat, when you pay it physically, it's outward. Okay? So these are inward and outward acts of ibadah that he spoke about. And so then he said, performing prayer, paying zakat, and uh, propagating monotheism are demonstrated by Allah saying, by the statement of Allah, meaning that this is evidence for this. Allah says, and they have been commanded, meaning the children of Israel, Bani Israel, no more than this, worshiping Allah alone, offering Him sincere devotion, being true in faith, establishing regular prayer, and practicing regular charity. And that is the religion right and straight. Or that is the deen of Qayyimah. That is the straight religion. That's the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. That's the religion of Tawheed, which is based on uh, strict worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ibadah. And it shows us that the, 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 the ummah from before us, they were ordered with the same uh, things they had to make salat, but they made salat in their own way in accordance with how Jesus والسلام, made salat and how the other NBA, their uh, ways in which they made salat. And they had to pay charity, the other ummas before us, before the ummah of Muhammad. وسلم. So they had to pay charity and do good deeds, but they had their sharia was different than our sharia. There's different aspects of the sharia that we follow compared to their sharia. But the thing that they had in common, as Allah says, that we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things worship, uh, that are worshipped besides Allah. Meaning that to heed all the messengers that Isa salam called to, they all called to the worship of Allah alone. Jesus didn't say, worship me. David didn't say, worship me. Ibrahim والسلام, didn't say, worship me. Uh, Adam, والسلام, the father of mankind, didn't say, worship him. But he worshiped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the proof that fasting is a type of ibadah is the statement of Allah, Ya yuladina amanu kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba Allah subhanahu says, O you believe, fasting is prescribed to you, 
as it was prescribed to those before you, that you may learn self-restraint or learn taqwa. So psalm, fasting, also the other nations before us that worshiped the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, they also fasted to Allah. That was also a very important aspect of ibadah, psalm, fasting. <coughs> and uh, also the natija or the thing that we gain from psalm, from fasting is what? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you may fear Allah. So fasting helps you to control yourself physically from eating and drinking and having relations when you become adults and get married and things like this. Also, those physical, but also, uh, you know, it's a spiritual restraint. And it's a spiritual purification. And it's bringing you closer to Allah and it's following the commands of Allah. So it has so many benefits fasting. In order that you will be have taqwa. So fasting is an act of ibadah. Because Allah Allah prescribed for you so. Kutiba. We studied we studied the word kitab. Kitab in Arabic, meaning a book. Okay, kitabun, book. Al Kitab, the book. With the Alif Ulam. Al Kitab, the book. Allah hears kataba, yaktubu, kitabu, kutiba. Kutiba is also a verb from that same word. Kutiba here, it doesn't mean it was written. Actually, you probably could translate it as written as well. But here it means like it is prescribed, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed it for you. Kutiba. And it's also what we'll study later as far as the verbs. This is called, in English, we call it. Uh, the passive voice. In Arabic we call it Mabni Lil Majhul. So you'll study this later. Because we didn't say Kataba, we said Kutiba. It was written. We don't know who the actor, we don't know who, or we don't know who the subject is. Who Kutiba? But it's known that Allah Kataba hadha alayna. That Allah uh, prescribed this for us. Kutiba alaykum. Meaning it was prescribed for you. It was written for you. Okay? Was written what? Psalm, fasting. And that means if it was written, if it's mentioned in the Quran that it was written upon you or prescribed for you, that means it's an act of ibadah. Anytime there's a command in the Quran or a command in the Sunnah, it means it's an act of worship. That's the asl of, of any of these things, uh, any commands in the Sharia that we get. Pilgrimage is demonstrated by Allah saying, this is on page uh, 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حُجِّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Pilgrimage thereto is a duty men owe to Allah, those who can afford the journey. But if any disbelieve, Allah stands not in need of any of His creatures. Allah doesn't need you. He's al ghani He's al ghani Allah doesn't need you. He doesn't need anything. We need Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the shahid here? What is the main purpose of mentioning this verse? He says, Pilgrimage is a duty men owe to Allah. If it's a duty, then that means it's ibadah. That's the whole point of why the Sheikh mentioned this ayat here. To let us know again, if it's a duty, it's ibadah, it's worship. If it is prescribed and written, that means it's worship. If it is a command in the Quran, that means it's wajib, it's worship. That's the asal is that it's wajib. And unless there's other dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah, as we said before, to show that it's not wajib, that it's mustahab, or it's one of the other categories for the five categories of fiqh. Wajib, mandub. You know, wajib means it's an obligation. And if you leave it, you get a sin. If you do it, you get ajab. That's wajib. Mandu, which means that it's recommended. If you do extra sunnah prayers, that's recommended. If you leave it, you get no sin. If you do it, you get ajr. That's what it means when it's mandu, or when it's uh, superogatory, whatever you say. That it's extra, uh, a sunnah. Mandu. Also, you can say mustahab as well. We say mustahab, and you'll learn this later. 
Uh, then we also have makru. Makru means something it's disliked in the Sharia. If it's disliked, that means you get adjur if you leave it, and you don't get sin if you do it. But it's not uh, like uh, something good. And mubah. Mubah means it is permissible, but there's no adjur in leaving it or doing it necessarily. For example, if you eat chewing gum, chewing gum is mubah. There's no adjur for it, and there's no sin for doing it. So it's just mubah. Using this chair is mubah. It's permissible. I can sit in this chair. I'm not getting adjur for sitting in this chair unless I'm using this chair to do ibadah. So now we're using this chair to do a dars. Maybe there's adjur for using this chair because it's a wasila. It's a means to doing something good. When you use something which is mubah to do something halal or good, it becomes a source of adjur. If you use your car to go to the masjid, if you use your skateboard to go to the masjid, use your bike to go to the masjid, then it, the bike, the car, the skateboard, aslan was mubah. It's something that's permissible, but it's not, it's, and it's not haram, and you get no adjur for it. But if you use that same skateboard to get you to the masjid, to all your salats, you use it as your main means, then that is now a means to worship Allah. So then you get adjur every time you put that Every time you do an Ali to the masjid or whatever, you might get adjur for that because now it's a means to do good. And then the last thing is something haram. We know haram, haram meaning that if you do it, you get a sin. If you leave it, you get adjur. So those are the ahkam al khamsa, just so we have some ma'lumat. And we'll leave off there. The next dars we'll start talking about iman, about faith, which is the second category. And then the third category, which is ihsan. And then we'll start getting into the last fundamental, which is the last part of this book, which is talk, knowing your Prophet So we'll end there on page 22, and we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad.